He has hooded eyes and a scowl. No, no, his jaw's wider. Yep, that's him. I'm here again. I didn't believe that I had schizophrenia at first. What I could hear was like a laughing voice. And I used to like walk the corridors, like trying to find out who, who was laughing. Then it, it, you know, it started to speak. And that's when it became very derogatory. I can feel unsafe even in my own home. If I'm reading a book, they say, she's reading a book. She can't read the book, she's doing this. And it's in like a whisper. So you've got a constant whisper of the voices telling each other what I'm doing. I can't explain how anxious and stressful and exhausting it is to deal with it. It takes over your whole um, life. There's a high stigma against my condition. As soon as someone knows that you've got paranoid schizophrenia, they immediately think that you're a danger to them. The most helpful thing that I ever received was the avatar therapy. I was enrolled in the first Avatar 1 trial. So you work with your therapist to create a computerised avatar that's near to my voice that I hear and see. The therapist, his voice will go through the avatar, then the avatar becomes um, less aggressive and passive. And then we work through strategies to be able to stand up to the voice. Now I am a consultant. I'm on a panel and we present with fellow research assistants. We do a lot of work together. It involves psychiatrists, psychologists, pharmacists. It's really valuable to have all of us in a team. We are all really equal. There's always like hope that in the future that the research one day will come that far that it will be able to stop the voices, hopefully in my lifetime.